Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Northampton Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. Called meeting to order. Uh, we'll start with a pledge. There will be a opportunity at the end of the meeting for uh, public comment, and if you'd like to make a comment, please sign up on the sheet in the back, and I'll recognize you at the appropriate time. Uh, next thing is uh, consent items, approval of the minutes. Mm -hmm. Paula? Okay, Mr. Chairman, if there are no objections, I request that the minutes of uh, February 23rd be approved by unanimous consent. Any comments? Okay, approved by consent, thank you. Uh, accounts payable, Kim? Yes, I have the bills list for March 9th, 2022. To requires updating by an ordinance. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion. Please. I move to authorize advertisement of a public meeting for Wednesday, April 27, 2022, at 7.30 p.m. at the Township Building to consider an ordinance and ordinance adopting the 2018 International Fire Code. Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is 7 there? 7 p.m., not 7. 7 p.m.? Oh, sorry, it is 7 p.m., not 7.30 p.m. Is that okay to amend your motion? Yes. Thank you. Uh, any other comment, Paula? No, that's it. Thank Kim? No, no, I'm good. Bob? No, thank you. Sorry. Nope. And none for me. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. Uh, next is consider a resolution authorizing condemnation of temporary construction easements on to install sidewalks on Second Street Pike. Barry? Sure, thanks, Adam. This is the, um, as most residents will realize, we're putting uh, sidewalks in downtown Richboro. Uh, the vast majority of that money is coming from the state through grants. Uh, we have one section of sidewalk that we want to finish, which is in the Iron Creeks Park section on both sides of the street where the old Wawa is. We want to put sidewalks on both sides of that street there. And we have a state grant that was given to us for $893,000 to pay for that. Uh, one of the things that we've tried to do is we want to get the um, approval from the, uh, the owners of the property that the sidewalks will be going through. Uh, we have a right of way there. And uh, we've tried a number of times, we just couldn't get through the, um, get a contact there. So after several unsuccessful attempts to obtain these temporary construction easements, uh, we've decided to move ahead with the, um, uh, a temporary condemnation of the property so we can have the sidewalks constructed. And then once the sidewalks are completed, it'll be turned over to the, uh, back to the property owners. So it's a very temporary thing, so. So if I can make a, uh, a motion, please. Please. Sir, I move to adopt resolution number R-22-9, which authorizes the condemnation of a temporary construction easement across certain property located at 800 Bustleton Pike, identified as tax parcel number ID 31-015-023-0001, which easement is necessary for the construction and the installation of sidewalks along certain portions of Second Street Pike, and to authorize the township manager and the township solicitor to execute all documents and take all necessary actions to adequately for the purpose of this resolution or otherwise required for this project. And then for the second parcel, uh, I also move to adopt resolution number R-22-10, which authorizes condemnation of a temporary construction easement across certain property located at 741 Second Street uh, Pike, identified as tax parcel number 31-015-023-003-001, which easement is necessary for the construction and installation of sidewalks along portions of Second Street Pike, and also to authorize the township manager and the township solicitor to execute all documents and take all necessary actions to effectuate the purpose of this resolution or otherwise required for this project. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, disc <coughs> discussion, Barry? Yeah, the only thing I, I would add is that this is a really important aspect of completing the project for downtown Ridgeboro for the sidewalks. Uh, this is actually probably the most dangerous section of town when people are walking and, and too often you see uh, young people or even adults walking along the guardrail there where the Iron Street Park is or they have to walk where the old Wawa is and out in the street. So I think having these sidewalks done is going to be a huge benefit for our downtown area and for public safety. So I fully support it. Yeah. That's great. Very good. Uh, Bob, any comment? Uh, just bearing what Barry said, this is necessary. It's a safety issue. This is a temporary act. This is our last resort. I think it's appropriate under the circumstances. Thanks, Bob. 
Kim? Um, I'd also like to make it known that um, it, there's no cost to the um, businesses themselves. Sure, this Kim. is all being taken care of by the township and grants. Um, and like, like everybody has said before, this is only temporary. We're only doing it so that we can build the sidewalk in um, the easement, and it goes back to the way it was the second they're done building. Thanks, Paul. That's good. That's good. There will be construction and traffic problems, but it's only temporary, like mm -hmm. Kim said. Um, but it is a safety a safety hazard right now. Mm -hmm. uh, no further comments from me. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Thanks. Uh, just before I go to the next, I, I failed to mention, uh, Mr. Pellegrino and Mr. Wart are not here this evening. Um, Mike Solomon is uh, sitting in as acting manager for night, tonight's meeting. So if you're wondering who's sitting with me, it's Mike. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, Bob, consider bids for road materials. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On behalf of the Bucks County Consortium, New Britain Township advertised for bids for bituminous asphalt materials and stone on February 4th and February 8th of this year. I'll note that the township is expected to pave or micro surface approximately nine miles of its road system this year. The estimated cost for the materials under this bid is approximately $1.376 million. If I may make a motion, please. I move to award contracts for various bituminous asphalt mixtures, stone, and crack sealing materials to Asphalt Maintenance Solutions, LLC, Center Valley, PA, Eureka Stone Quarry, Inc., Chalfont, PA, Hanson Aggregates, BMC, Inc., in Newtown, PA, and Highway, LLC, in Sarver, PA, as recommended by the Public Works Department at their bid prices to the Bucks County Consortium. Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Anything further, Bob? I think we all drive on these roads, and we all know coming out of the winter what it's like to hit potholes. We can't control the state roads. We can control our own. So uh, obviously this is necessary, and I think it will be of a benefit to all township residents. Thank you. Kim, anything further? I totally agree. Barry, any comments? Uh, absolutely agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, this, this will go towards our, <coughs> our commitment to pave 10 miles a year, to resurface and pave 10 miles a year, and we're going to stick to that. We're going to do that again this year. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, that's all we have for new business. Uh, we're going to move into liaison reports. And first up, uh, Dr. Rose. Um, yes, first I'd like to talk about, um, uh, we have a trash notice. Um, and this is effective um, March 23rd, which is today, 2022. Uh, J.P. Mascaros and Sons, the trash hauler for Northampton Township, has been experiencing delays at the contracted dumping sites. And this is carrying over to residential collection. Uh, J.P. Mascaro and Sons and the township expect these delays to be temporary, please leave your trash at the curb as they will be working late in the township to compensate for being delayed at the contracted dumping sites. So if you put your trash out tonight and you don't get it picked up tomorrow, just leave it there. It's going to get picked up. Um, and we just want to say thank you for your patience with all this. I know this has been a long... Uh, but this th this is a different problem. This is a problem with um, uh, where they're bringing the trash to. It, it has nothing to do with um, the hauler. Um, next, I'd like to report about the senior center. Spring's getting off to a very busy start at the center. The, the calendar is packed with a variety of classes and activities through the week. The card room is open and accommodating seven different activities to choose from. There's also a brand new billiards league getting started as well. Um, and then the Senior Center has two awesome fundraisers coming up. Now this one I think everybody's going to like. The first is a sticky bun sale. Everybody can get in on this sweet deal. Beginning Monday, March 28th, you can purchase a voucher for six Fritz's famous German sticky buns for $10. All you need to do is stop by the center or place your voucher through the mail. The vouchers are honored at both Fritz's locations in Ben Salem and Langhorn through September 30th, 2022. This way, the sticky buns are fresh and delicious right when you need them. And if you need to buy more than one, you can. Um, 
Just saying. Uh, the center's annual Spring Fling Artisan Shopping event is scheduled for Friday, April 29th from 5 to 9. The event is just in time for the spring holidays, graduation, and end of school year gifts. It's a perfect opportunity for a springtime shopping splurge. And also visit the website um, at NorthamptonSC.com for um, the calendar and details or call the center, 215-357-8199, or just stop by um, at 165 Township Road and see what we're all about. Okay, Parks and Rec. Okay, this is a very busy season. Uh, you know, we all know what a scrambled egg is, but how about an egg unscrambled hut? Hunt. Again this year with Peter Cop Cottontail hopping around 10 different Northampton Township building locations, he will be leaving a large colorful, colorful egg outside each building that will hold a hidden word. Your hunt will be to five, find all 10 eggs and unscramble the words to reveal the bunny's message. Stop by the special locations between Sunday, April 2nd through Saturday, April 16th. Write down and unscramble the 10 different words to reveal a spring theme sentence. Once you unscramble the words, email Parks and Rec with the correct message along with your child's name and age to be included in a special drawing. Four randomly selected children will receive the Golden Egg Award of a $25 gift certificate to the Learning Express. Winners will be notified Monday, April 18th. Um, for details and clues on egg locations, visit NorthamptonRec.com. Are you up for an adventure? The Bunny Hunt Egg Venture is coming on Saturday, April 16th. Activities will start at 9.30 in the morning at the Northampton Municipal Park Wetzel Pavilion. Mr. Peter Cottontail has been hopping around the bunny trail in Northampton Township's Municipal Park and he can't be found. We need your help to find him. Enjoy a magic show and balloon art from AZ Magic. Then get ready with an egg venture using clues and lots of help from local business friends to find the bunny. Then get photo ready and be sure to bring a basket to collect lots of goodies. To participate, you must enter with Parks and Recs as soon as possible because space is limited. Once April hits, we're all starting to think of summer, but Parks and Rec starts thinking of summer back in October. They take one month off before planning the next summer. Registration for summer camp have been coming in since January. In fact, there are very few spots left in our half-day camp. However, we have just announced a long list of weekly specialty camps. I'm sure there's something for everyone. And I hope everybody received their Park and Rec brochure it was, I know I got it in my mailbox last week, and um, there's information pertaining to the swim club. Although the purpose of our swim club is primary, primarily for our camps, there is an opportunity for residents to participate in swim lessons, swim team, and a limited swim club membership. For information on everything I spoke of and the hundreds of programs that are offered, you can either call Parks and Rec office or visit the website at NorthamptonRec.com. And that's all I have. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Uh, Paula. Okay, I'll, I'll start with the um, our Famous, infamous already, our 300th anniversary uh, committee want, is very excited. Uh, they're sharing, they want to share a lot of their upcoming presentations, activities, and events that are planned around all around the township to celebrate our historic 300th anniversary milestone. Uh, the website is up and running and ready to keep you up to date with all the things that are going on for 300. If you go to the website, it's NorthamptonTownship.com, and you select the 300th tab. There you'll be able to view a complete calendar of events throughout the year, view details of upcoming presentations, and find weekly fun facts, trivia, and <coughs> stories about our township. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you are on social media, be sure to follow, like, and share the 300 on Facebook. Our public works crew is getting our plows ready 
uh, not for a snowstorm, but for the paint the plow program. Every school in Northampton Township will be giving, given a plow that students will paint with creative and original artwork. Uh, that will depict local history, they hope, keeping with the township's 300-year anniversary theme. And then once that, all the plows are painted, uh, the residents come and see and they vote on them, and the winners will be announced at the, day, the uh, Northampton Days Festival uh, come September. Uh, <clears throat> now, if anyone has any historic sites that they know of that they haven't, uh, we haven't mentioned in our 300 uh, literature, uh, please uh, <clears throat> GPS the app, and uh, we there is an app that's being created that's going to have um, you drive from site to site, and you can discover history and background uh, of uh, on your phone. You can do it from your phone, your laptop. Uh, instructions will be available shortly on the 300th anniversary website. <coughs> so plan to join the celebration of Northampton community and celebrate the past. Okay, and that was our report for the 300. <clears throat> now I wanted to mention uh, the, the brick laying, which has been a hot topic. We have uh, the Veterans Committee uh, has bricks that they want to place at the Dombrowski Park in the middle of Richboro, and there's 12 Northampton residents who uh, made the ultimate sacrifice, and we wanted to honor them by putting bricks, lay bricks, in the uh, in the park there. And we're going to do that, and we're also putting up a plaque to honor the honor them that are either missing or killed in action. Okay, and that's what the um, that will be for Memorial Day. We're going to have a, a small um, salute to them. Uh, the Nike missile base sign, where our missile base is located at the Little League Park at the rec center, we are moving the sign that indicates where it is. It's going to be moved from the batting um, table or batting table, batting platform to the telephone pole so everyone can see the sign. and and read about what it is, the Nike missile base. Um, we also, if anyone knows a bugler, the Veterans Advisory Commission uh, would like to hire a bugler to play at our wreath laying at Christmas time at the uh, cemetery, the Union Cemetery in on Alms House. Okay. <clears throat> and the library has... Uh, a new training session for um, people on the board of the library. And it's the, that's the latest thing, and they, they are learning new things, what to do, and um, more innovative ideas or how to make our library more uh, visited, more visited more, and more interesting to all of us, and more comfortable. So uh, there's a lot of libraries around, and we want to be up to par also. So Northampton is busy working, and we have a new director who's, who's getting all the wheels in motion, getting things going. So that's it for me. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Paula. Bob? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the Historical Commission, my report's very brief. I want to say on Sunday, May 15th at 2 p.m., there will be a ceremony to dedicate the archives reading room in the library in honor of Betty Cornell Luff and Virginia Briggs Geyer. That ceremony will be open to the public, and I'm sure I'll reference it again in next month's meeting. As to the municipal authority, I wanted to touch on two matters. The first relates to a termination of forbearance period. At the January board meeting of the Bucks County Municipal Authority, Northampton Township, resolution number 2022-1258 was passed relating to the termination of forbearance period. Individual letters were sent to those customers owing in arrears, advising them of the resolution and the need for compliance. A public notice was posted on the municipal authority website on January 6th of this year, providing additional information. 
The February bills also provided a brief notice advising customers of the change in collection procedures. The authority has provided an opportunity for some customers in arrears of payment to receive assistance from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The program is sponsored and administered by the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services known as the Low Income Household Water Assistance Program, which allows ratepayers to get grant monies for both public water and sanitary sewer services based upon criteria established by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. For more information regarding the termination of forbearance period and the Low Income Household Water Assistance Program, please visit us at www.nbcmatoday.org. I also wanted to touch on the Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Project. The Northampton Bucks County Municipal Authority will be embarking on a significant sewer rehabilitation project in the coming six to eight weeks. There are breaks and defects in the sanitary sewer system that allow ground, rain, and other surface water to enter the system. The project will reduce wastewater treatment costs, conserve capacity in the sewer system, and protect the environment by removing these extraneous sources of water. The inside of the pipes will be lined utilizing a trenchless technology called cured in place pipe or CIPP. This is a cost effective option which allows the avoidance of complete sewer line replacement. This <coughs> method offers restoration of the pipes without having to dig them up. The total cost of the project is $3.8 million. The best part is that will not increase rates for our customers. Approximately 16,100 linear feet or three miles of pipe are being rehabilitated along with a lining of 175 manholes. The Municipal Authority Post will mail postcards to customers being impacted prior to the start of the project. For more information about the Northampton Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Project, please visit www.nwan ds.org. That's all I have. Thank you, Bob. Barry? Yeah, thanks, Adam. The um, Zoning Hearing Board met on March 14th uh, to consider four residential appeals. Uh, the next schedule to meet on Monday, April 11th. The Planning Commission meeting for March was canceled. Uh, they have tentatively scheduled a new meeting for April 12th um, at the Township Building to consider a redevelopment of 960 Second Street Pike. That's right in uh, downtown Richboro between the McDonald's and the Trumark. There's three houses that are looking to um, redevelop that. Uh, one of the things that's under consideration is a new Dunkin' Donuts with a drive-in and another site there. Uh, there's also been a buy right plan has been submitted for the Bucks County Roses property on Buck Road. And what buy right means is basically that's one acre zoning and they're looking to the applicants applying for, uh, I believe it's 13 homes that would be single family dwellings on that with uh, one acre uh, for each lot. So that's uh, going to be presented at the Planning Commission on April 12th. Um, current projects, you know, the townhouse, the Spring Mill Country Club continue to um, move along. Uh, the Waverly subdivision on East Holland is moving along very fast too. And the giant in the former Murray Shopping Center is um, hopefully getting done by June of this year. So we've got a lot of comments from residents about the Great Wall and what we're going to do with it, but uh, we're assured by the developer that it's going to be a thing of beauty and it'd be um, well-fitting within the town. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that on April 27th, which is Wednesday, at 9 o'clock, there's going to be an opening ceremony for the Newtown Rail Trail and be done in um, Upper Southampton at the train station. So the uh, Newtown Rail Trail, the first phase has been completed. Um, it's a beautiful, spectacular trail. It goes all the way down to Rock Ledge Park. And it's a, it's a really nice ride or a walk, things like that. I encourage all residents to take advantage of that. Uh, there'll be a ribbon cutting at 9 o'clock, and I think a lot of the local townships will be um, attending in that, that ceremony. As most people know, the uh, trail has been approved for Northampton Township, and uh, the first phase of that's going to be uh, hopefully done starting this year. So that's all I have, Adam. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Barry. Just a couple um, report outs for me. First, um, as many have seen, the Holland Fire Station has been demolished, and the construction has started down there for the new fire station at the corner of East Holland and Old Jordan Road. Uh, just be careful in the area. There is some fencing up, and the Richboro Station is probably going to be. Um, pretty close behind in the next couple weeks. Um, the trucks have almost all been moved out. The, temp the old police station is the temporary fire station. A pole barn was built behind, and uh, we'll have a place to keep the trucks back there safe and dry. 
Uh, also, uh, I, I, last month, I believe, I got a, um, a mailer, <clears throat> excuse me, from Trihampton Rescue Squad for their uh, annual subscription. I think it may be up right now. If you do get it, it's a great opportunity to support your local emergency services, uh, emergency medical services. Um, they provide excellent service, and for uh, a very nominal fee, you can, uh, your family can join and become a member, and it does cover a lot in case you ever need their services, so I, I highly recommend that you do that. Um, that's all I have for tonight. With that, I'll uh, ask Mr. Solomon anything for the manager's report? Nothing. Report, thank you. Um, Mr. Wirt is not here tonight for assistant manager's report. Uh, solicitor's report, Mr. Paisel. No report other than to announce that the uh, Board of Supervisors met in executive session uh, two times since our last uh, supervisors meeting. The first was on March 9. Uh, um, present were the, uh, well, it was virtual, uh, members of the Board of Supervisors, the Township Manager, the Assistant Township Manager, and I participated. Two matters of potential litigation were discussed. No official action was taken. Um, one of those matters uh, resulted in the action taken earlier this evening by the Board of Supervisors and that was the condemnation of the two temporary construction easements. Uh, the other executive session was this evening, immediately prior to uh, this evening's Board of Supervisors meeting. The board met in executive session for approximately 30 minutes. Um, present, and again, were all the members of the Board of Supervisors, uh, the acting township manager, the township engineer, and me. Uh, a matter of potential litigation was discussed, no official action was taken, and no official action was required this evening as a result of that second executive session. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, engineer's report, Amanda? Nothing tonight, thanks. No report tonight, thank you. Uh, we'll go on to public comment. I believe we have uh, one signed up, Michelle Butkowitz. Did I say it right? Butkavich. <coughs> Butkavich, sorry. Yes. Oh, no, you're, you're, trust me, I, I get it all I, the time. <laughs> so can you just say your name and your address for the record? Sure, it's Michelle Butkavich, 65 Cypress Avenue in Richboro. Good evening, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm sure at many of these meetings, this is honestly my first time ever speaking, I'm sure you receive a lot of feedback, um, maybe some criticism from time to time, I'm sure. But here, honestly, I'm just, I'd like to show some gratitude. Um, in 2019, my home was struck by lightning resulting in a fire, and if it wasn't for the unbelievably fast-acting Northampton Township Police uh, Fire Department and uh, I don't know what would have happened. Um, they truly saved, they, they literally saved my family, tried to salvage my home, and I am unbelievably grateful for the action that this board has taken to do these renovations, to support these men and women who deserve the optimal conditions in order to do what they do. Um, I'll never forget that night. They stood in the rain with me. They were empathetic to my loss, helped give me guidance. Exceptional. So I really wanted to show some gratitude because things have been so crazy since then <laughs> that I haven't had a chance to get here. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to do that. I wanted to speak to the library. It has been unbelievably amazing for my children, especially during this pandemic. What the children's program has done with Zoom story times, um, Miss Christy, Miss Sarah, just phenomenal craft packet pickups. Just the ingenuity um, is just tremendous of, of, of those people. The staff is incredible. They have done so much to truly integrate the community and, and make families who, you know, still have to stay at home for one reason or another to feel very, very connected. And I just want to express my gratitude to the library as well. Right now, most importantly for us, Northampton Township Department Parks and Rec, the preschool potpourri program. I was so fearful that we wouldn't be able to send my child. Uh, I'm an immunocompromised individual, so for me, COVID could result in a very, in a very severe outcome, and we have been very safe, but I, it's at the expense also of my children at times because I don't want them to not be able to experience what they need to experience with schooling and socialization. Preschool potpourri, as soon as they advertised, they were adhering to CDC guidelines. I can't begin to tell you how Unbelievably relieved I've been. There has been no COVID spread. The mitigation measures, the planning, the execution, Miss Barb, Mr. Bill, Miss Jen, all the way to Nancy Opa Opa Opalka, just phenomenal staff, exceptionally professional, supportive. My four-year-old went in never having experienced that. Based on the fire, our displacement, we were homeless for a period of time until we got back on our feet with everything. 
I cannot tell you how good it feels to be back in the township, to have my children experience an exceptional program that is truly life-changing. Um, there are many other families too, like mine, so I'm not even just showing gratitude for myself. I would like to express it from other parents that send their children to this just remarkable program um, who either are, like me, immunocompromised, immunosuppressed, or caring for elderly parents, um, or obviously have children of that age who are un ineligible to be vaccinated at this time. It really has given um, them the opportunity to grow academically, <laughs> socially, emotionally. And I just wanna thank this board for, um, just for all the work that you do, everything, the infrastructure, the thought, the water. I mean, all of these things are, Things you hear about in the community, things people talk about, care about, often complain about, but maybe not all that often people come to you to express how sincerely impactful the work that you do really affects us. And that's why I wanted to come tonight. So whenever you do get an email that might throw you off or decisions are challenged, I want you to remember this. I want you to think of me. I want you to think of my family that's been in a very tough situation for a very long time for a lot of different situations, you know, for a lot of different reasons. Um, and just remember it, and remember that the work you do matters, the decisions you make matter, they impact so many different members of this community. So thank you, that's all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, well, I think I could probably speak for all of us. Um, you know, we appreciate that you just took the time out of your life to come and say what you said, to, not only to us, but for all the fire department personnel, I'll definitely make sure that message gets to them. For the library personnel, we'll make sure the message gets to them. The parks and rec personnel will make sure <coughs> the message gets to them. And it's really about those folks that work in those groups and those departments, hearing kind words really helps them in their day. So thank you so much. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add, but we really do. And we're glad to see that things are starting to get back together for you. I remember the fire. Yes. Uh, so uh, um, I'm glad it's, it's been quite a while since I saw you last, but we're glad it's working out for you. Uh, we don't have any other public comment for this evening. So with that, uh, the meeting is adjourned.